Now, there are seven warning signs of an iodine deficiency. You may be familiar with a thyroid problem. If you're low on iodine, you can actually create a hypothyroid condition. And the various signs and symptoms of that would be hair loss, thinning of the hair, lethargy, depression, dry hair, dry skin, as well as weight gain, and cold intolerance. You do not tolerate cold. And by the way, like in the US alone, there's like 10 million people who have hypothyroidism. In Europe, it's 40 million people. And just so you know, 90% of all hypothyroidism is more autoimmune. And so it may not be an iodine deficiency. However, iodine deficiency in general is very, very common. 1.88 billion people on this planet have an iodine deficiency. So it's quite a few people. One of the best ways to know for sure if you are low in iodine, um, I've talked about the patch test where you put a little drop of iodine on your skin and you see if it gets absorbed. But if you really wanted to do an accurate test to find out if you have an iodine deficiency, um, you'd wanna measure your thyroid stimulating hormone because that's a really good indicator to know what's happening at the level between the pituitary and your thyroid, simply because the thyroid is an iodine hog. So it's gonna start hogging up all the iodine. And so if there's a deficiency of thyroid hormones, you won't get this feedback loop to turn off the thyroid. So the pituitary just keeps putting out more thyroid stimulating hormones. So it's gonna be higher. And that's a really good indication to know if you're really deficient in iodine. And relating to that, uh, as far as the numbers go, um, you want it to be under four. But some institutions are bringing that number lower, like 2.5. There's some interesting data on that that might be true. But in this video, I want to talk mainly about the symptoms that you may not be aware of that are related to an iodine deficiency, okay? Number one, intellectual disability. That's right. Your cognitive function diminishes greatly when you don't have iodine in adults and in children. In fact, if you're deficient in iodine, your IQ could go down by 15 points. If a child is deficient, it can go down by 13 points. If you add to this an, an iron deficiency in a child, that can bring it another seven points lowered. So you're talking 20 points lowered IQ from a simple mineral deficiency. And not just a mineral, it's a trace mineral. And what's really bizarre to me is that we only need these tiny, tiny trace amounts of this mineral and if you're deficient, the consequences are not tiny, they are huge. So this really involves your ability to solve problems, your advancement in your job, and it can relate to your future success. Number two, infertility. Now, if you take a look at the body's main purpose, its purpose is to survive, reproduce, and continue, okay? And so this little symptom of infertility is not so little. It's actually a huge symptom for the body in its purpose to reproduce. And so there's a huge importance in this connection between having this little trace mineral and having the ability to reproduce. If an infant is deficient, okay, in iodine, or if a mother is deficient while she's carrying a baby, the child is very, very vulnerable to developing hearing loss because out of all the parts of the brain, okay, the part of the brain that needs the most oxygen, the most metabolism, and the most iodine, which they're all connected, is the auditory centers. And so if a mother is deficient in this one trace mineral, the child can end up not being able to hear or having hearing deficiencies. Number four, fibrocystic breast. Now, why would an iodine deficiency show up in the breast? Well, because iodine has a very big importance of regulating excess amount of estrogen. And when you have too much estrogen and not enough iodine, you can develop like these mini little uh, cysts, either in the breast tissue or in the ovary. And as a side note, if you have fibrocystic breast, you should be taking iodine as a supplement and it works very effectively. All right, number five, heavy periods. Now, why would you have a heavy period? Well, because you're estrogen dominant and iodine can help regulate that and it can help regulate your periods. And as a side note too, um, this doesn't work all the time, but 
I'd say about 50% of the time, it can also help hot flashes. All right, number six, and this is interesting. Having a deficiency of iodine can reduce your productivity, your ability to achieve something in children and adults. And I know what you're thinking. This probably explains uh, a lot of things that's happening nowadays with a certain percent of the population. But iodine can help people increase their ability to get things done. All right, number seven, brain damage. Now, now, wait a second, an iodine deficiency causing brain damage? I thought you'd have to have physical trauma to cause brain damage. Well, guess what? If you don't have enough iodine, all sorts of things occur because iodine is essential for certain enzymes that not just create uh, brain tissue, but also repair brain tissue. And if you're deficient, you actually develop brain damage. In fact, it's the number one cause of brain damage in children. Fascinating. Now, I know you're thinking right now, well, what foods are high in iodine? What causes an iodine deficiency? I've done a whole other video about that, but I will just touch on it briefly. The number one cause of iodine deficiency is not necessarily related to not getting enough iodine from your diet, okay? I wanted to primarily focus on number three, goitrogen foods. These are foods that can cause a goiter, which is swelling of your thyroid, usually because of an iodine deficiency. So what's interesting is this, you could be getting enough dietary iodine, but consuming these foods at the same time and end up with an iodine deficiency and creating a lot of problems. So this point right, right here, number three, goitrogen foods is the most important information, okay? And out of these foods that can deplete iodine, cassava is the number one that has the ability to block iodine. Why? Because in addition to its ability to bind to iodine and lock it up, it also has two additional chemicals that can also bind in a potent way to iodine. Hydrocyanic acid, which then turns into this theocyanate, which is a very strong and potent binder to iodine. So because of these two chemicals right here, it is not good to consume a lot of cassava simply because it can block iodine. So unless you're consuming a lot of iodine, okay, you're probably going to be deficient. There is certain parts of the world that consume a lot of cassava in their diet. And this is one of the reasons why large populations are deficient in um, iodine. Now you also have soy and corn and canola, okay, which also block iodine. And take a while to guess what they feed animals, okay? Soy, corn, and sometimes canola. But if you actually feed animals this food, you can actually create deficiencies in the animals. So here you are uh, thinking, well, you know, I don't consume soy, I don't consume corn, I don't consume cassava, I'm good to go. But you're consuming the animals that live off these foods. Now also cruciferous foods, that would be the cabbage, the broccoli, the Brussels sprouts, uh, things like that. Now, I've done videos on this, and there's two points I want to make on it. If you're steaming or cooking these foods, as in the cauliflower or steaming the broccoli or cooking the cabbage, it's going to greatly reduce the effect of binding to iodine. Also, you would have to consume a lot of cruciferous to create a deficiency. So this is not at the top of the list, okay? Now, peanuts and pine nuts also can bind with iodine in large amounts. They are not the strongest foods that'll do it, but I wanted to put it on the list. And then you also have millet and rice that can also bind with iodine. So this is why um, there's a larger population that are deficient in iodine in India, Southeast Asia, South America, as well as Africa. So what are the best foods for iodine? The number one best food for iodine, especially if someone's pregnant, would be shellfish, okay? Then fish. Anything out of the sea, okay? Like sea kelp, that would be good. You also have eggs have iodine. Organ meats have iodine. Nuts have a moderate amount of iodine. But believe it or not, vegetables and fruits are not high in the list with iodine. So if someone's consuming soy, corn, millet, other grains with cassava, 
vegetables, fruit, and no animal products, no eggs, no cheese, they can easily end up with an iodine deficiency. Now, this is an interesting topic, but this next video is even more interesting. It's the seven surprising reasons why you are deficient in iodine that go even beyond what I just talked about. Check it out. I put it right here.